type of setting in which the federal government is not permitted to reimburse for services due to a statutory payment exclusion, but those institutions do exist. Uh, intermediate care facilities, individuals with intellectual disabilities, and hospitals are all types of institutions that are not home and community based. So this last bullet uh, is, is where we get into height scrutiny because it talks about other, other locations that are not um, uh, formal institutions, uh, but may be um, acting as one and providing services in, in an institutional manner. And so locations that are determined to have the quality of an institutional setting are by their nature not home and community based. And that's led to the need for CMS to have quite a bit of guidance issued on what types of settings are those that, have the, that are presumed to have qualities of an institution. Uh, and uh, you know, we've, we have a, quite a bit of guidance on our website, uh, but there, it's, it's also safe to say that we've been having some, some new conversations in this current administration. The regulation defines three types of settings that are um, presumed to have the qualities of an institution. Most of the two of the three are, are uh, determined so based on their proximity to an institution. The third one is not. So the first category is settings that are on the grounds of or adjacent to a public institution. And here we could be talking about a cottage on the grounds of a public ICF IID. Um, that setting is not um, precluded from being a home and community-based provider, but because it is on the grounds of an institution, it's presumed to have the qualities of an institution and there needs to be a special look at that type of setting. The same goes for settings that are in the same building as a public or private institution. So here we could be talking about a wing of a nursing home that's an assisted living uh, facility, a wing of a nursing home that's an adult day center. Again, there, there's no strict 